Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add anything you want to a record in a Microsoft Access database. We're going to create user editable supplemental fields. Today's question comes from Wayne in Bismarck, North Dakota, one of my Platinum members. Wayne says, one thing I love about my Android cell phone is that if I want to add more phone numbers, I can. Want to add a few extra email addresses? No problem. Want to add a birthday and an anniversary? You got it. Any way to do this with access? Well, Wayne, yep, you can do it. It just involves a little bit more work, and we have to know how to do something called a many-to-many -many relationship. Let me show you how. Now, this is one of the things that Wayne is talking about. I love the contact manager in my Android phone. It's got some default fields, your name, your mobile phone number, your email address, and if you want to add more, it's very easy to add additional fields. Right? Drop down the mobile, for example, and you've got work, main, work, fax, if people still use faxes, you know, pager, other. You can add a custom type if you want to, and you can do this for most of the different data types in here. So how can we do something like this with access? Well, how about if we add a many-to-many -many relationship with a subform here, and we can add any kind of field we want. Drop this down. You want to pick their favorite band. You put in Rush, for example, or their favorite color, or anything that you want to add in here. You want to add an item to this list, just drop this box down, type in something else. All right, Starship name. Okay, close that, and now you got an option in here to put in their starship name. All right. How do we do something like this? Well, let's take it from the top. Before we get started, got some other stuff I want you to watch first. If you don't know some of this stuff, then go watch these videos. Start my blank template. This is what I base all my videos on, so I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. If you haven't watched this yet, go watch this first. You'll need to know how to do relationships. Go watch my relationships video. These are all free videos, by the way. You'll find links down below under the video. Go click on those, watch these, and come back. You'll need to know how to make relational combo boxes. Now, here's a tricky one for a lot of people. Many-to-many -many relationships. If you've never built one of these before, go watch this video right now. Pause this video. Go watch many-to-many, -many, and then come back. This is important. And this is one I just released a couple days ago. Go watch the list items edit form. This one isn't that important. Go watch this if you can but I'm going to be building one of these today. And if you have a free minutes, watch my consolidate tables with helper data. It's very similar to what I'm going to be doing today. So if you got a few minutes, watch this one first. All right, go watch all that stuff, then come on back. Okay, so we're going to build two tables to add information to our customer form. It's not going to be in the customer table because obviously in our customer table, we've got individual fields, right? First name, last name, email, and so on. We're going to add another table that's going to hold related information for this customer. And then we're going to have another table beyond that one so we can track what kind of information each one of those items is. I know it sounds confusing, but bear with me. Essentially, one table is going to hold the fields like cell phone, work email, all the extra stuff you want to store. And then another table after that one will store the actual data itself. Okay? So let's go create table design. All right, this first one is going to be the list of fields. I'm going to call it other types. Okay, so other type ID, that'll be an auto number, and then an other type name, and that'll just be short text. This will be the list of other types of data. So save this other type T, my other type table, primary key, sure. And just put a list in here of what types of information you want to be able to store. So cell phone, all right, maybe home phone, all right, work phone, uh, favorite color, all right, favorite band, whatever. Whatever other types of information your users might want to store, right? Stuff that you might not have for everybody, because obviously if it's something important and you're going to try to get it for everybody, you're going to make that an actual field in the customer table. So this is just like random stuff that you might or might not have. All right, so close this table. Now we need another table where I can say, okay, here's the customer. Here's the type of data I want, like cell phone, and then the actual data itself. Make sense? 
All right, so create, table design. This one's going to be the other data table. So other data ID, that's my auto number. All right, I'll need a customer ID. Who does it belong to? That's the foreign key, so it's a number of type long integer. Then the other type ID, that's also a foreign key, that relates back to the other table we just made. And then the actual data itself, we'll call it other data short text. Okay, save this as other data T. Primary key, sure. And there we go. All right, so now if we wanted to put some sample data in here, because it's always good to have some sample data, uh, keep in mind what your other type table has in it. Okay, so we got cell phone, work phone, all that stuff here. All right, so just some sample records might look like this. Customer one, I got a favorite color and it's blue. All right, customer one, favorite band is Rush. Okay, uh, customer two, Jimmy Kirk, right? His cell phone is 555-8888, whatever. See how this data is filling into the table? Okay, now we're going to make a form to put all this stuff together. We'll make a continuous form, all right, that will be a subform in the customer form. We're going to have this, which will be a combo box. So you'll see this list of items there. And then the actual data itself, the customer ID will be in there because of the relationship between the parent form and the child form. All right, so let's make this continuous form. Now, I've already got a continuous form right here from my template. I'll just copy and paste that. Copy, paste. We'll call this the other data F. Okay, other data F, where are you? Right down here. And we'll design view. All right, we don't need the ID. You don't need to see any IDs in here. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that label because this will be pretty self-explanatory, right? Okay, let's bind this guy to the other data table. All right, other data table. Now, this will actually be the data text box that we're typing in. So we're going to bind this one. Let's go to all here. We're going to bind this field to the other data field that's freely entered text. And then we need a combo box to pick the type. All right, so we're gonna go to up here on the control box. We're gonna find a combo box, drop it right there. All right, look up the values from the table or query. Where are we getting the list of data from? The list of data items is coming from the other type T. That's a list of types, right? All right, next. Bring them both over because we want the ID, but we want to see the name. Next, sort them by name. Next, that's what it's going to look like when the box opens up. Remember, the key column is hidden. Next, all right, we're going to store that value in the other type ID. All right, we're picking a type for this data. Next, what label would you like? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways and then finish. Okay, let's get rid of that label that comes in there. So there's our combo box that lists the type, and here's the actual data itself. And the tab order is going to be backwards, so I'm going to come up here and fix that real quick. Tab order. Oh, it's called combo four. Let's fix that too. All right, we want this to be, let's call this other type combo. Save it. Get rid of that footer. All right, save that and close it. Now see what we got in here if we open this up. Okay, there's everybody. There's my two items. And there's the one from Jim Kirk, right? The relationship will be formed when we make this a subform. All right, so close that. Open up the customer form. Let's design view. I'll just move this stuff out of the way. Slide that over here. All right, and we'll do this. Make these fit under here nicely, all right? Okay. And we'll put our subform right there. Ready? Grab it. Click, drag, drop. Slide it where it needs to go, get rid of that label that comes in with it, resize it, make it look party. And come here. Can't, I can never grab the edge of this thing. Get that little thing right there, drag it down. Okay. Now, let's check the properties real quick. Double click on the edge. All right. Link master field and child field should both be customer ID, right? There's a customer ID in here. It's not on the form itself, but it's in the record set under the form. So you can use it. Okay, and they got a customer ID out here. Okay, now, save it, close it, open it back up again, and boom, there you go.
And if you want to turn off the navigation buttons and all that, you can, the scroll bars. I like to leave them on for this, but... All right, now, want to add something down here? All right. Favorite color we already got. Let's see, cell phone. All right, put your cell phone in there. Okay. Now, you want to give your users a nice, easy, fast way to edit this list, to add something custom on here if you want to. All right, what's his, uh, what, what starship does he pilot? Well, in that case, let's make a list items add form or a list items edit form. That's another video I just released a couple days ago. All right, go watch this one if you don't know how to do this one. <laughs> but I, I, I'm going to show you anyways, so, right, <laughs> might as well. Um, we're going to make a simple little editing form. So I'll just copy this guy here. Copy, paste. This will be the other type F. Okay. Edit. Design view. Get rid of that. Slide that over. Get rid of that. Slide that up like this. Scrunch that down. Uh, let's just change the color real quick. Let's make this... Because uh, you're going to see part of this. Let's make this guy blue. Just change it up a little bit. And we'll go with that blue in here. Okay. Just so they're slightly different. All right. So change this. The record source is going to be the other type T. And then this guy is going to be based on the other type name. And we'll change the name here as well. Okay. Save that. Open it up. There's your other type. Okay, if you want this to be um, sorted, because right now it's just in any old order, you can make a query and basis on that. Or if you want, watch this. Come in here, go to the record source, hit the dot, dot, dot button right there, right? If you want to create a query based on the table, say yes. All right, bring in the other type ID and the other type name. And then just like you're building a query, come down here and sort it. Okay, close this, say yes. And it's going to write the SQL and put it right inside that record source for you. All right. Learn SQL, by the way. All right. This is just select this field, this field from this table, and then the order by is your sort. I got a whole set of different classes on learning SQL. If you want to make your databases much more powerful, learn SQL and VB. Okay. All right. Quick commercial, my SQL seminars. Part one is really all you need. That's the, that's the good one. It teaches you the basics of SQL. Part two is doing action queries, updates, edits, that kind of stuff, changes, adding to a table, making tables. And then part three is about editing the structure of your database. So check those out. Okay, so now we just have a sorted list in here. We can close this, save changes, yes. And now if I open this guy up, there's that. Okay. Now I'm going to move it here into the middle a little bit like that. Save it, close it, watch this. Now come in here. We're going to go into design view. Let's resize that a little bit. Okay, I want to pick this combo box right there. Now watch, see what just happened? When you click on this the first time, it gets the sub form. Then you got to click on it a second time. Now we're editing the field inside the sub form. Be careful. A lot of people get confused about that one. All right, if you're out here working on this, okay, and you click on this, now you got the sub form selected. Click on it a second time, and you get that combo box. Go to data. Find the list items edit form, and we're going to make that the one we just created, the other type F. Other type F. Save it. Close it. Okay, now I'm in here. Okay. Uh, sir, what's your, what starship do you pilot? Uh, oh, I don't know. Let's hit the button down here and add it. All right, now we can add starship as one of our types of data that we want to collect, right? And if you drop this down, look at that. Starship's in there. All right. Enterprise. Okay. Go to somebody else. Oh, Mr. Kirk, what Starship are you on? Oh, well, I'm also on the Enterprise. Okay. What else we got in here? Let's see. Deanna Troy. All right. Well, she's also on the Enterprise. Let's say um, favorite food. Not in there. Well, let's add it. Favorite food. And now we can pick favorite food. And we'll put chocolate. 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 Even though I read somewhere the actress hates chocolate. <laughs> okay, see what we did? Now we can we can basically make our own fields. Now, obviously you lose some power. All right, you I mean like input masks and formatting and you know you're just saving this data as text. So if it's if it's important data, 
you know, it should go into its own field in the table. But this is perfect for that random stuff that you might or might not need. Okay, you just extra bits of information. You don't want to necessarily throw it all into a text field, like a big, you know, long text field, like a memo field. But, you know, and, and over time, when you tell your people, you know, start asking our customers what their favorite food is or start, ask, start getting their birthdays. And once you see that you've collected enough of this information, maybe then move it over into an actual field in your table. You know what I'm saying? This is just, uh, you know, like a secondary bit of information kind of. But this also gives your users the ability to create their own fields in a secondary table, right, without having to design the database because you don't want your end users doing that. But they can add fields in here, and then you, the developer, can look at it later on and be like, well, we've collected 5,000 records that include Starship data. Let's move that over into the primary customer table, and then we can control it better, and we can query on it better. All right, see how this works? Now, members... I am going to show you a couple more techniques that we can do. For example, let's say you want to collect birthdays. All right. Birthdays. Okay. And now I come in here and put the birthday in. And there's nothing to stop someone from doing June. Right. We can put a little bit of control on here with some VBA. We can say, okay, if this is a date, I want to at least make sure it's a valid date before I let them save it. We can do some checks in VB, all right? Or we could check for numeric value, okay? There's all kinds of things we can do with VB under that. So members in the extended cut, that's what we're going to do, okay? We'll enforce some data types. We'll check for numeric values. We'll check for date values. In our other type form, we'll specify what data type that is, either text, numeric, or date. Currency is basically numeric, right? Then we'll put custom error messages up. If they type something in that's not valid in there, it'll be oh, date required. And then we can also format it. All right, here's mine. Okay, let's say I got, you know, birthday in here. So we'll come in here. We'll put in here a birthday. Where's birthday? There's birthday. If I just type in June, it yells at me. Valid date required. Okay. And then if I just put in like um, two, six, like that, it'll format it for me then too. It knows it's a date and it formats it because I like the ISO date standard. Okay, same thing with numbers. All right, if I try to put a numeric value in, like number of children, I put X in there, oh, numeric value required. And you can force it to make sure it's a nine. And then when we go to add these, you'll see here, we can specify what type of date that is. Date, what type of field that is. <laughs> so that will be in the extended cut for the members. And also... If you want to learn a lot more about many-to-many -many relationships, I cover them in great detail in my Access Expert Level 7 class. Lots and lots of stuff. I go over all the, 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 the basics in the background between junction tables and how to set these up properly, um, you know, how to put customers in groups, that kind of stuff. So if you want to learn about many-to-many -many relationships, Access Expert Level 7, I'll put a link to that down below in the link section below the video. And this stuff will be covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download the databases and get access to the code vault. I hope everyone learned something today. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.